So most of you will already know how to create like a ranged attack or a gun in Game Maker. You create like a bullet when you're firing, uh, you give that bullet some momentum, and you just check for a collision between that bullet and the target, and it's pretty straightforward. Um, what a lot of people don't realize is that the logic for a close-up melee attack is fundamentally exactly the same thing, or it can be the same. It's less intuitive because there's no distinct visible bullet on the screen, but the logic can be exactly the same. You just create an invisible bullet object, check to see if that bullet's hitting the enemy, and if it is, do your thing. The only difference is that while a ranged bullet starts with the shoot button and ends with a collision, or the bullet going out of range or leaving the game world or whatever, our melee attack bullet lasts for a specific duration of a player animation, unless your weapon is a separate object to the player entirely, in which case the process really is exactly the same, you just check for a collision between the weapon and your enemy. But in this tutorial we're going to deal with creating a special invisible hitbox object during a specific player animation, and having that affect the enemy. In order to keep things simple, I've gone ahead and created a bunch of stuff already, I've got a little platformer here, um, a little hero who can swing his sword and jump around, walk around, and a little skeleton over here. I just use a simple state machine with the player to put him into either a normal state where he runs around and jumps, or when I press space he does a little attack and he goes into an attack state. As you can see at the moment, he swings his sword at the skeleton, absolutely nothing happens, and that's what we're going to fix. If you don't know how to do any of the stuff that's already here, you can either download the code for, uh, for this particular video, or you can go back and watch my other tutorials on platformers or on state machines specifically. This tutorial is just going to focus on making this attack animation uh, register a hit on this skeleton. So the first thing we're going to want to do is just sort of define this uh, invisible bullet that we're going to use, um, and define its sprite so we know uh, what space in front of us we're actually going to hit when we do this little sword swing attack. So what we're going to do first is just take a quick look at SPR underscore attack, the attack animation for uh, the player, and you can see just a little sword swing, and I think it's more or less like these three frames here are the frames that we're going to want to actually be capable of landing a hit. So that's frame, not frame 0, but frame 1, 2, and 3. So they're just these three frames here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that sprite, right click and hit duplicate, and I'm going to call this new sprite SPR underscore hitbox. I'm going to edit sprite, and I'm just going to take this sprite, because I think I'm just going to create one hitbox or something that's sort of going to cover this sort of rectangular space in front of the player, and I'm just going to base it on this particular frame. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a red box, like that's just going to cover that space. So if I draw something like that, and let's make it cover that there. So we just cover that space, and then I'm just going to delete the rest of the player from this sprite. So if I just do that, or from this frame of the sprite rather. Tick, tick. And obviously we don't want the rest of the, the player in here, so I'm just going to reduce this to just this one frame. Now by doing this, what I've conveniently done is kept the origin point in the exact same place as it would be for SPR underscore attack. The origin's in the same place, so it's referenced to the same center as where the player will be. So all I need to do is check for this hitbox in the exact same position as where the player is at any point to see whether or not uh, we're hitting the enemy. So now what I need to do is create an object for our hitbox or our invisible bullet, if you will. So I'm going to right-click an object, go to create object, and just call it obj underscore hitbox. Uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it visible for now and make sure I assign the sprite to be an SBR hitbox, the sprite we just made, and I'm going to add the post draw event. Now I'm going to do all the rest of the code for actually collision checking between this hitbox and uh, our enemy inside the player, so I don't need any other code in here, uh, but for the post draw event I'm going to just stick in instance underscore destroy. What that means is after the hitbox has drawn itself to the screen once, so after it's drawn this red box to wherever it is, it'll destroy itself afterwards. That means um, we can just toggle uh, this visible box on or off, and that'll uh, toggle whether or not our hitbox is visible in, in the actual game world. If we just destroyed it at the end of a frame, just like the end step or something like that, um, the hitbox would never get to its draw step, and therefore would never actually be drawn, regardless of whether or not we set visible. But by killing the object in the post draw event, we can just toggle visible on or off, and that'll make it so uh, it's, it's really easy to manage whether or not we can see our hitboxes for uh, debugging purposes and all that. So I'm going to leave this visible for now, and click OK. 
Okay, so now we have the bullet itself. It's just a simple hitbox rectangle that will create itself, draw itself once, and then, or well, draw itself once if it's set to visible, and then destroy itself. Okay, so it only exists for a single frame of game logic. So now that we have that object, let's go into our player object and go into the step event. And as you can see, I have all the stuff here just for a basic platformer all set up. I have a simple state machine, and when we press spacebar, we go into a uh, state attack. Okay, and we're in this attack state, and all this does is reduce our speed to zero, make sure our sprite is that um, the attack animation, and does any colliding that we need to do. So here's where we start writing the code to make this whole thing work. So what we're going to do is we're just going to create this object. Our obj underscore hitbox are going to create it if we happen to be on the right frames of our attack. So that's between frames one and three, if I remember correctly. And we're going to, within that object, check to see if we're hitting the skeleton and if we are, do something to the skeleton, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is go a quick comment here just so we know what's going on. Hitbox. Okay, so in here we're going to say if uh, our current image index, so that's the current frame our player is on, is greater than 1, and in fact greater than or equal to 1, because if we're on 1, that's the right frame as well, and image index is less than or equal to 3. Okay, so it's those three frames. Uh, frame 1, frame 2, and frame 3. If we are on or between those three frames, that's the uh, the period of the attack that we want this hitbox check to actually happen. Now I'm going to type with uh, instance create. Okay, this is probably the first time I've ever used a with statement like this. I'll explain in a second. x, y, obj, underscore hitbox. So as we know, when you use a with statement, you provide an instance ID and, uh, or an object ID, and whatever I type in between these next set of curly braces will happen to whatever ID I provided, whatever object I provided. Uh, but if I just type uh, an instance create function in here, instance create returns an instance ID of the object it created. So it kind of kind of does two things at once here. It creates the object, obj hitbox, at our current position, and uh, it takes the instance ID of that object and passes it into this with statement. So anything we type in here will happen to the object hitbox that we've just created, okay? It's just a, a quicker way of doing it than setting it to a variable and then saying with that variable, okay? So the first thing we want to do here is say image uh, underscore x scale equals other dot image x scale. That's just going to make sure our hitbox is oriented the same way as our player because we're using image underscore x scale to flip our player left and right. Um, if you're not doing that or whatever, you might not need to do this, but you'll probably need to do something that uh, determines which way the hitbox is, uh, needs to face if you're using this method. Once we've done that, we're actually going to nest another uh, with statement in here. We're going to type with again. Uh, this time we're going to say instance underscore place x, y, par underscore enemy. So I have a parent object for the enemy, so a skeleton is one of its children. And this is just to make sure that this can apply to any enemies that we happen to put in our game. Okay. Now, we've got an extra with statement in here, you might wonder why. Oh, hang on, I forgot to... Always forget that, always forget to add that, that final bracket on the end when I do with and with... Uh, if statements as well, I tend to do the same thing. Let's add a space in there as well, just to make that look a little cleaner. So I've done something quite similar here with this with statement. Um, instant place, um, you may recall, it's quite similar to place underscore meeting, um, which checks for a collision at a certain point. Um, but this uh, instance place checks for a collision at a certain point and returns the ID of the instance that there was a collision with if there was one. If there wasn't a collision, it just returns uh, no one, the special word no one that I believe turns, yeah, turns uh, yellow, which is also equal to minus four. So if you get minus four back, there was no collision and it won't do this stuff in the with statement to anyone. But uh, if there was a collision, it'll do whatever we put in the curly brackets to the instance of par and score enemy that it collided with. Um, and when I say what it collided with, I mean, of course, the, the hitbox that we created here, because we're running this chunk of code inside the hitbox that we just created. 
Okay, now I could theoretically put this uh, this code here with inside the create event for the hitbox, but I'm just keeping it all in one place just so it's simple logic and you can kind of see how it's all working, okay? So if we collide uh, with an enemy, so if the hitbox we've made has collided with an enemy, uh, we're gonna say with that enemy, if uh, hit equal equals zero, that's a, a variable I've already set up in the enemy object, so they have a a hit variable that says like whether or not they've been hit or whatever um, so that I can create like a little cute red flash on them and stuff I've set up ahead of time uh, hit equals one uh, VSP so just their vertical speed because they have a similar sort of stuff to the uh, player is gonna be minus three just to sort of make them jump up in the air a little you can do whatever you want to the player really here um, to the enemy that you're hitting here I'm just sort of demonstrating the various things you might want to do HSP equals sine X minus other dot X uh, multiplied by four um, what that's gonna do is it's gonna take sort of uh, X minus other X uh, put into sign will give us sort of a, a one if we're on I think the uh, the left side of the player and a uh, minus one if we're on the right side of the player it might be the other way around <laughs> I can't think of the top of my head uh, but basically what that means is we're gonna make uh, their, their horizontal speed go away from the player okay so yeah if they're on the left it'll be one and if they're on the right it'll be minus one so and then multiply that by four so that we get like a decent horizontal speed so that's just gonna knock the enemy away from us a little bit and also just make the uh, will make the enemy face the player as well. So we'll do image x scale equals uh, sine HSB. So yeah, we'll just make it, it point whichever way uh, it, it happens to have been hit from. Hey, and that's actually all there is to it. So if I run that now, um, like as I said, I've already set it up in object skeleton so that when it's hit is equal to one, it's hit degrees over time and it uses that to create a little red flash. So we should see now, yep, when I hit him, uh, he flashes red like that, and as you can see, it's showing the little red hitbox whenever I'm, I'm swinging the sword like this. Um, so you can see that when that red hitbox overlaps the skeleton, he gets hit, and uh, his speed and so on is set accordingly. I haven't done anything to reduce his hit points or anything like that, but that's obviously something you can set up yourself. Um, and then, just so I can demonstrate why we put this in the post draw event now, I can just turn this off of visible, and it all still works exactly the same, still destroys itself at the same time. Only now we can't see the little red box, but it's useful for debug purposes if you can't work out why something isn't hitting something that you think it should, or maybe you need to adjust your hitboxes, and so on and so forth. And it's a really sort of simple, easy to manage way of uh, getting melee attacks and stuff working straight off the bat. It's a very, very useful type of approach if you're doing like a game jam or doing something quickly. It's not the most efficient solution. You're obviously <laughs> you're creating an object every single uh, frame uh, of your attack animation. Uh, well, in between the frames that you've specified, uh, are the frames that can hit the enemy anyway. Um, and obviously, if you're like, that's not just three frames of game logic because the the animation is playing at something like half speed or something like that. So it's actually something like going to be like six frames at 60 FPS or something like that, where we're creating an object, looking for a collision, and then destroying the object. And a faster way of doing this would just be to check a rectangle space and do a collision underscore rectangle event with the specific coordinates in mind. But just doing it this way, um, or, oh, there's other ways of doing it as well, but just doing it this way, um, it makes it really, really easy to just manage our hitboxes by drawing sprites, um, and really easy to turn them sort of on and off visible, just by like having this post draw, uh, instance destroy, and just turning visible on and off. And uh, yeah, it just makes everything really easy and simple. So hopefully if you understand the logic of just creating uh, an invisible bullet that checks to see if it's hitting the enemy and if it does, does the stuff to it. And if you understand that and can, can make this work, you'll be able to make much more efficient and much more effective solutions work just by using the same logic and mixing up your approach. Yep, that's more or less how, all, how it works. There you have it, hope you found that one useful. If you're into content to do with games and game development and Game Maker Studio specifically, maybe consider subscribing, up to you. Uh, either way, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.